Greetings to you all in the name of Jesus Christ, wherever you are. We bless our Father for being so kind and good. We bless Him for He is forevermore the same. It does not change. And His love, that means His love will never change. He's too good to be understood by many people who think about him religiously, but he is so wonderful. Now I pray that today will be a wonderful day, will be a beautiful day, that you will grow up in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ, that you will appreciate his presence, his power, his kindness and goodness, that you will be able to see all this, that you will not fear, do you understand what he did for us? You understand the place where he positioned us? And you walk without fear, rather in the power and boldness given to you through the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. May peace and grace be multiplied in your life. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. We bless his his holy name for he is with us forever he will never forsake us will never leave us he is with us forever and we are with him like I say what we need is to be awakened to this fact because it's a fact we're studying and discovering the glorification of Jesus Christ and now he had to put an end to the first uh, rule which was there from day one when Adam was created until the, G the day Jesus came and specifically he was about to die and how the first system was overthrown and how, did, how Jesus did it and how he had to stop the first man who caused an order who determined the order and he came in that order and dethroned him because he is the only one who had power to do that the bible told us that we could not do it by ourselves we could not save it we could not stop it if we could we would have done it but we couldn't you see and so we read in the book of rome hebrew first of all john in chapter 12 verse 31 now is the judgment of the this world now the rule of this world will be cast out so how was the ruler of this i was explaining the ruler of this world and how he was cast out and, and what this means and this is very very crucial very very important we have to understand it for we need to get the whole idea here for us to take advantage of it in chapter 5 verse uh, 12 we read therefore as sin came into the world as sin came into the world through one man and death as the result of sin so death spread to all men so you understand that sin came into the world through one man so we have one man who is now the cause of sin in the world and this one man is not an ordinary man he was a very very powerful and special man because he's the first man he was not born he was created he came in a certain order whereby others who followed later did not come did not match his order he was far above them he had power he had authority and the most important thing about this man is not about when we hear about authority we think of where he spoke to certain things and things ha happened the way uh, he he ordered them to 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 be but yes that is one thing but most importantly is what was to happen uh, to him was would be then the trend would be the the order set for those who come after him so that is the most dangerous thing and it's not about the words he spoke it's not about the miracles we see he did but it's about what happens to him so he was the representation of humanity and what had to what happened to this man had to happen to the whole world so this is how powerful one man had the 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 image of the rest 
And like I said some, in some previous uh, teachings, I revealed to you that um, most times we have to discover this principle of one man. Of course, I, I just I wanted to put it, I can put it this way, the principle of two men, talking about Adam and Christ. But then, before I even talk about that second man who is the special one, who is different, who is unique, who is amazing, who changed this whole order, you will realize in the Bible the principle of one man. You know, from Adam, you realize Adam was so strong, was so powerful. What happened to him happened to the, his generation. And we see Abraham, for instance, rises, rising, and he's becoming the father of all Israel. We see, for instance, in the battle between uh, uh, the, the giant Goliath and David, we see David uh, fighting Goliath in the name of all the Jews. And the rules were like, whoever wins between us, either the giant or, or David, Whoever wins, his people will be free, or his people will rule over the other, uh, the other, the other side. And so you find that David had to fight on behalf of all the Jews, and the giant was to fight on behalf of all Philistines. So it was one man, you know, representing many. One man representing many. So this idea of one man representing many, you realize it's been there in the Bible. And that is how you pick the image they were representing. We find kings. The kings were representing something greater than them. The, the high priest was representing something greater than him. You see, all these things in the Bible. So we re realize that there's one man here who had power who introduced sin in the world. See, if you have to, to read this, you have to understand things. You have to read and understand what you're reading instead of imposing your own thoughts or ideas you already have in your mind. For instance, here they are telling us in Romans 5, 12, therefore as sin came into this world through one man. Notice, this, you know, we, we attribute sin to the devil, Satan, and so on and so forth. But let's hear what the Bible says. The Bible says, through one man. So he's saying what you people don't understand, it is the power of this one man. How all these things happened, it was through one man. So what happened to this one man <laughs> was going to be the order set for others who come after and this is exactly what happened. We have to understand this thing. When, once you understand it, you understand now your freedom in Jesus Christ. When he comes and says that this, this, uh, the, the judgment of this world, you know, this is the time of the judgment of this world, now the ruler of this world will be cast out. You understand. And that will change everything. So he says, uh, through one man, and death as the result of sin, you see. Now, death came as a result of sin, that is uh, known. So death spread to all men, no one being able to stop it or to escape its power because all men sinned. So they are saying no one could stop its power, no one could escape it. And he says because all men sinned. And he's saying all men sinned not because men, all men were there. Imagine he say all men sinned. That means even those who are not born yet, they, are, they had sinned. So he's not just talking about the practical sin people, you know, committed. He's talking about that all men were counted sinners, were considered sinners because of one man. See how powerful this man was. Number 13, verse 13, he says, To be sure, sin was in, this world, in the world before ever the, before ever the law was given. But sin is not charged to men's account where there is no law to transgress. This is also important. That only law determines or defines what sin is. Without law, there is no sin. And even if there was sin, sin is not imputed or accounted uh, to anyone. It was there, but no man was uh, accounted for. Because this there was no law there was no law this is exactly what he's telling us now verse 14 is a very very the the best one it says yet death held sway from adam to moses now why does he talk about from adam to moses in case you you wonder 
from Adam to Moses, not because the sin did not continue even after Adam, uh, after Moses, but he says from Adam, from, uh, from Adam to Moses because of the law. Because Moses, now, I, I like this, uh, this uh, amplified version. He says, yet, yet death had held sway from Adam to Moses, the lawgiver. So they are reminding us why they are talking about Adam, uh, uh, Moses, because he's the lawgiver. Why the law? Because the law was to determine, to define what sin is. So prior to the law, sin was already there, as we are told, but it was not imputed to anybody because there was no law. But now when Moses came, he brought to the law, which put to light the sin which was already there because it determined, defined things which already be present. For instance, the law said, don't steal. So people realized they've been stealing all along, you see. So now it was seen, if you, see, you, st you stole, again, it was seen. But before people were doing it, it was not seen because there was no law. So when he talks about from Adam to Moses, he means from the time, you know, sin entered until the time sin was now known. But even when the law came, the law was not supposed to save us from sin. The law was supposed to put to light what sin is, and that sin is ex in existence, so that we may realize we need help. So to be sure, sin was in this world before even the law was given, but sin is not charged to men's account where there is no what? No law to transgress. So yet death held sway from Adam to Moses, the law giver, even over those who did not themselves transgress. So this was affecting even those who would not transgress a positive command as Adam did. So these people didn't have to, to transgress any law as Adam did. <laughs> but yet, they were dying. They were dying, you see. Now this is in one way some, somehow called injustice. Because see, he says these people did not have to do what Adam did for them to die. They just died. And yet they did not do something wrong, anything wrong. Let's say, even those who had not sinned. Adam was a type, prefigure, of the one who was to come in reverse. So you know that Adam is a reverse or reversal of someone who is to come? That is why I'm telling you. So the most important thing is not about Adam. The most important thing is this one, he was a type or shadow or pointing to. Because he's, he's just a reverse. So now when you cannot continue into the reverse when the real thing has come, the real person has come. The former destructive, the latter, the latter saving. Do you realize what he's saying? The former destructive. So that Adam was the cause of all destruction. Now he says the latter saving, Christ who was to come, was to become the savior. So now, Christ stands here and speaks and says, now is the judgment of this world. Now the woe of this world will be cast out. In other words, my reverse, that means Adam, is dethroned. He has no more power. His kingdom is over. His system is being uprooted. He's no more. This is a new order. So Christ had to set another order through his death. So this is what he did. Thank God that Jesus did change all this. And remember the consequences of sin. There was supposed to be death and all those stuff. But therefore, then if Jesus died and set us free, what are supposed to be the consequences? Life eternal. Life eternal. And victory and success and peace. That is what we're supposed to know.